Hello, this is Don, and welcome to my shop. Um, I am not a machinist, I am a hobby machinist. And uh, a year or so ago, I bought one of the Grizzly GO768 uh, small lathes, and I've uh, been having a lot of fun, but there's been a couple things that I really didn't like about it. Uh, so I had to make a couple changes. The first thing I did, and I actually ordered it right away, is uh, I got one of the quick change tool posts, and I had to modify the, uh, the compound. Um, and uh, what I did is I basically put the thicker stud or the bigger stud into this. I retapped uh, that so it would fit right on there. But one of the things that have been bothering me um, mostly about this machine, and if anybody's got one out there, if you want to change the compound angle, you basically have to uh, undo the compound. And I'll get some close-ups of this, but you have to take it all the way back, almost to where it comes off, and then you have access to two set screws, or cap head screws, that allow you to loosen it and adjust your angle. Well, to me, that was kind of a pain to have to almost take the, the compound off every time I wanted to change an angle. And uh, let me see, I've got the part right here. This is what was on. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. Let me turn it. Turn this on quick. Need to focus here. And yeah, probably a little close. But anyway, this was the part that was under the compound, and you had the two cap screws that you had to drive down, and this pulled up underneath and locked the, um, the compound in place. So I was watching Tubal Cane, and while he was taking apart a compound, and uh, I can't remember if it was a craftsman or what he was working on, but I saw how they had a dovetail post as far as the swivel, and I decided that I would uh, see if I could replace this part right here and make my own dovetail post so I could actually tighten from the sides and uh, lock the compound in place. And uh, so I'm going to show you here what I did. Uh, even up try to get some of the footage of me doing some of the work. Uh, I don't have a lot of it, but at least I can tear this thing apart and show you what I did and show you the part that I made and how I replaced it. Okay, um, first we're going to take this apart um, and we'll get a little bit of the anatomy on this particular uh, compound. Get this uh, quick change tool post off, which if you get one of these I still got the uh, the original one sitting here, and uh, I've got some tools in there, and I made a spacer so I could use it. But it just seems to be a pain to have to switch that out. So I really love this. Uh, one of the things that uh, is an issue when you change this out is um, this little collar down here, this little bushing that sticks up, and um, I didn't want to actually cut into my tool post, so I made a uh, a spacer out of just some square stock and uh, put a little set screw to kind of hold it in place. Um, that works out pretty good. I just dropped my spacer. So anyway, the next thing we got to do to get into this is we have to take this off. And if you can see right here is where those old uh, cap screws were, and I had to take it all the way back this far, almost completely off. Matter of fact, that's off. So you almost have to take it completely off to get in here to adjust this. So let me set this out of the way, and I've got my, uh, I'm holding that gib in there so we don't lose that. Keep that in place. Okay. Uh, the modifications that I made are, if you notice, uh, I used to have this little compass that was on the side, this plastic piece, that was supposed to line up with this, but honestly it never matched up. I, I'm not sure that it was even uh, worth messing with. And what I did on this part right here, that uh, this is the part that attaches to the cross slide, um, this part here and this set screw and I've got an identical set screw on the back 
Uh, that wasn't there before. That was the new stuff that I did. So let me go ahead and uh, loosen these up. Okay. I'm just going to go a little bit more. I have to take these almost all the way out the way I designed it. And if you notice, I'll turn this over and set this just like this. This part here is the part that I made. And what this is, is basically, oops, let me get this back out of here. Uh, this one is shaped just like this part. Basically, the hardest part about this whole thing is I needed to take this out and do some very accurate uh, measurements on this. I drew it all out, and um, basically all I was doing is recreating the bottom part, but then the middle stud, the middle point, I created this uh, dovetail. And um, what that allows me to do then is... On this part, I measured, that's where my brass pieces are going to come out, so let me see if they come out. That's going to be stubborn, I don't want to come out, but that's okay. Basically put a couple set screws, I think these were 5 sixteenths, I can't remember. Uh, fine thread. I want to make sure I have plenty of clamping power when I uh, clamp down on this thing. So, so basically, the modifications to this block is I had to drill a hole through here and through this side. And if you notice this little aluminum plate, this is going to be my. Oops, I'm not in the in the frame. Uh, this aluminum part is on here. It's going to be my new compass. I haven't figured out how I'm going to mark this yet. Uh, I do have another uh, protractor that I can set here, and maybe I'll mark some, uh, just the marks that I'm going to use, like uh, 30 degrees, things like that. But I had to drill through here, drill through here, and the big one was I had to drill this, this main hole out here um, so it would fit the dovetail, which I made at 9 16 and that seemed to work pretty well. Now if I ever have to go back to this for any reason, which I can't imagine why, I can always just put a brass bushing or something in there and uh, you know make it so that's, that's just a pivot point so it's not, not a lot of stress or anything on that. But with these, now what I've got is that slides on there. It's a pretty, pretty precision fit that I've got. Uh, then I made some uh, some little dowel pins with angles on them, some brass dowel pins, because I didn't want the uh, steel against steel to mess things up. And even this one, you can see that I got a little bit of a you know indentation there. But basically, you just push these in with the long angle down, back. And what's nice about that is I can replace those if they wear out or give me problems. So first I'm wiggling it around just to make sure that those are lined up correctly. And right now I've got a line scribed across the back of my uh, cross slide here. That gets me back to my 30 degrees or 29 and a half. I haven't been doing any uh, threading on this machine yet. I guess I'm too lazy to swap out the gears yet. But now when I tighten these in, and I can get a pretty good torque on that, tighten that down really good, it pulls up on the bottom, pulls this down to the top, and now it's, uh, it's absolutely solid. I'm hoping that I can show a little bit of video of me uh, working on this part. I made the part, 2 inch round bar, uh, chucked it up, made all the parts, made the dovetail, and then I, uh, the hardest part was uh, with this small lathe trying to uh, part this off, and uh, 
I ended up uh, getting this. It was big enough at that time I could put it in my uh, horizontal bandsaw and I was able to cut cut a chunk of it off or the part off and then I just faced it and uh, got it to the right size. What I've done so far is gotten this down to my major diameter, uh, which is one and eight hundred thousandths. And this next one here uh, needs to get down to 1.570, and we are at 1.62. So we can take a little more off of here, and then when we come out here, uh, we'll work on the dovetail part of it. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that with what tools yet, but that's where we want the dovetail. So let me take a little bit more off of here. We should be real close. On the button. One five seven zero, maybe a half off. Alright. Okay. So I've machined the part, and now I'm just trying to cut it off here. Um, Take a little time going through some two-inch steel with this. I got it on slow. I don't want to put too much stress on this. But uh, you can see the dovetail that I machined, and also uh, the other two steps that we need to replace the old part. So we'll come back when this is done. Okay, I got the part cut off, I got it in the chuck backwards, and now we're just going to smooth out the back, face it off. Take a look. So, next thing is we'll take a compound apart and start working on that. 